Man, so 2008, I know you started j- jumping to local rap battles and ciphers, age 14. You are going out hard, passing out CDs. You are doing shows. I loved seeing that tweet. Someone said you bought the McDonald's you didn't even remember. Oh, you saw that? Yeah. That yeah, oh, my God. Yeah, no, that was, that was my bag. Like, I was, when I decided to rap, when I decided to rap, I took that shit serious. And I was pressing up my own CDs, and I would go anywhere. That's always been me, though. That's always been my brand. I'll go anywhere. So I was going to the worst, most treacherous neighborhoods. I'm jumping out on Blue Hill Ave at 14 at the gas station by myself, passing shit. Excuse me, not like 14, probably like 16, 17. Yeah, yeah, because I wasn't like I, I wasn't going as crazy with the CDs. But around like 17, 18, I'm jumping out anywhere. Take me to where it's the worst. Cause that's where, you know, people appreciate hip hop a lot of the times. Right. So I'm jumping out there, showing people I'm not scared. I'm looking people in the eye, passing them my CDs, shit like that, or trying to sell it at that time. Right. Um, I know you start recording at 15. You dropped your first mixtape, White Boy Like Me. Talk about leaning into the white rapper later. You got that cover? You saw that cover? No, I'm, let me Google it real you quick. You gotta Google the Millie's White Boy Like Me cover. If they could flash that on this interview, yeah, that'd they be definitely hard. will. That'd be hard. Okay, because that cover X- was viral before the internet was viral. With the XL white tee. Yes, <laughs> but you see, that's my neighborhood, and that at the time, that was like, oh shit, that okay. was like six phone calls, and people would be like, "Damn, you brought the whole city out," and I was like, "No, that's twenty percent of my neighborhood. That's twenty wow. percent of my neighborhood. Maybe, maybe." I don't but see no I all, other white but, boys on there. Yeah, no, because I was the only white boy in my neighborhood. That's Crazy. why I was white boy like me. It was, yeah. um, I forget. Honestly, that was off a record, but I forget what the record said. But yeah, that cover was viral. And that cover, it was like viral just in the streets. So, you know, I, we passed that shit out. And people would look at the cover and say, white boy like me, and look at it. And they would give that shit a listen because oh, of I that cover. That. I haven't had a cover like that since. You know, I got other shit that pulls people in. But that cover right there, that was viral. That's hard. <laughs> Man, but yeah, was there a decision that you were like, yo, I'm going to just embrace this shit? Because, you know, obviously a lot of people, it's it's hard for a lot. For sure. You know, like at that time I was like, I'm just going to show people my reality. That's the only thing. And through the course of my career, when my reality um didn't like, I felt like, I felt like it wasn't working because I've been rapping with Dirk said, been rapping since 2010. Whoever thought I win. <laughs> so when... My shit wasn't working. I started trying to find different formulas around 2014, 15, 16, 17, until finally around like 2019. I said, fuck that. I'm going back to showing people my raw life and how it is because I'm still the only white boy in the history of this shit to ever move around in the trenches with all my shit on state to state, city to city. I'm the only one that's patched in like this in America. So I decided, fuck that. I'm going to show them. I'm going to show them. I'm going to show them my real life. You know? I respect that. Oh, God. What? Who are your top five white rappers of all time? Ooh, top five white rappers. <laughs> Who's my top five white rappers? Eminem, Slim Shady, Marshall Mathers. Facts. Number one, two, and three, for sure. <laughs> M M like I, I like I'm a student at M. That's one of the things in my career that I'm I'm waiting on, whether it comes or not. Like, um, I, I want that cosign, you know? I just want to know that he watched my shit because I for sure flame shade four or five 90 million times. But that's somebody I hold in high regards. He made it actually, Eminem made it actually easier for me growing up just because it was like a cool white boy to look up to. Um, but I would say, all right, let's go. Eminem at number one. At number two, Paul Wall. Mm, respect. At number three, it's getting slim. It's getting slim. <laughs> well, I just want to say Eminem and then me, undoubtedly, right? So, like, but that's just in, like, in reality, I am the best white rapper since Eminem. Like, as far as just high-level rap. Like, if you really know rap, if you really know rap, there's no fucking way around it. Other than that, you're biased. You dig? So, um, Eminem, me, um, Paul Wall. Who's some other white rappers? I like Yellow Wolf, but I think like he's his fine. Confederate flag shit and all of that <laughs> corny shit he's doing, that, that kicks him out the category. <laughs> um, MGK's garbage. 
Wait, why? Because he can't rap. He, but he got a good rock star image. Okay. But like, I'm a real rapper, Shelly. See what I'm saying? Shirley, but yeah. Shirley. Yeah, you Excuse good. me. No, you good. I thought that's what I was about to I say. I hear you. But I'm I like, I'm, I really like break down bars and syllables and words. Okay. Like, so I look past image and flow. A lot of white rappers just came through and did that fast flow. Mm -hmm. that and said nothing. So he came in with a rock star image and all of that, but you're not nice though. So even when the Eminem battle happened and people's minds I was, was gonna ask, bring that pe up, people's yeah. minds was blown because at the time they expected MGK to just get blown out. So when he showed any sort of uh, resistance, he came and he said a rap. He said, your beard is weird. <laughs> Name a bar from that song. That shit is garbage. <laughs> Eminem came and said all type of crazy shit. I'm breaking it down on a rap level. People who's not really comprehending bars is going to say, oh, MGK1, oh, he, he flamed it. Nah, you looking at a video, you looking at an image, you're not listening to rap, real right. bars. So, yeah, he's garbage. So, <laughs> Eminem, number one. Um, me, number two. Paul Wall, number three. Mac Miller, number four. Because oh, he's man. just Rest a goat. Peace. Like Mac Miller, Rest Mac Miller's a goat all around. Facts, one thousand. Yeah, for sure. Mac Miller's a goat all around. I agree. Um, Action Bronson's fire. Uh, Jack Harlow's fire. Um, am I missing any white rappers? No. It's a good question. I mean, I interviewed Token on here. You know, Token. Token's my guy. Okay, cool. Token's my guy. Um, am I missing any white rappers? I don't know. The list is slim. I hear you. The list is slim. Who's nice? Who's nice? A lot of guys got on because of their skin color. For sure. For sure. Man. Uh, you got your first break on Static Selecta, also from Massachusetts. Yeah. I love him. Static is a goat. I actually have a tattoo that says love is, on, is the... Only the That's my favorite Joey Badass song. He produced that. Yeah, but yeah talk no, about Static is a goat. Static is legend. one of the people I learned to like work really hard from. Like, cause Respect. Static will go to when I first moved to New York, like that was one of my things. I would either try to get around Jada or or or, or Static or my man Set Free. And Static was always like, Static was always um just moving around. He would go to three, four clubs in a night. DJ, go back to the studio, make beats, get up, raise his daughter. Right. Fucking what? go to a show, go to another concert, DJ, make beats, make beats. I'm like, damn, like his work ethic is blowing my shit out of the water. Respect. Yeah, so Static, Static's, Static's a dope dude. For How was sure. that first connecting with him? Well, when you meet Static, anybody who ever met Static, you're going to think he doesn't like you at first. <laughs> Cause he's like, cause he could be cold, okay. you know, like, but that's just his personality type. So that's funny. Yeah, once I got past that, it was my guy. He helped sure. you get your name. He helped me get my name. Did he? No. Nah. Oh, okay. Where'd the Millies come from? Millies was from like so like Cambridge is a basketball town. So the star point guard at the time on the freshman team, I mean, excuse me, he was a senior. This the star point guard um, of Cambridge Trinity Latin. His name is Louis Ford, and he gave me my name. He would just see me like in the neighborhood when I'm young, and he would just say, my name is Miles, so he would just say Millie's, Millie's, and I didn't know what it was, but I just liked it. So I put a nine in front of it to sound a little tougher initially when I was a rapper, and that was my rap name, Nine Millie's. <laughs> yeah. You like the number nine? Yeah, I fuck with nine. <laughs> Not really, though. I don't really play that in roulette. I like, like, 13, 27, shit like that. That's funny. 2011, you did Summer Jam. Who was on the bill and how was that experience? Nicki Minaj was on the bill. Ooh. That's all you need? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I'm going to forget anybody else. <laughs> Nicki was on the bill. Damn. Was that, like, the Young Money era? She was... For sure. I mean, Damn. whatever era it was, she was headlining. She was crushing it. Did you get to talk to her? No. We had to clear the backstage out for sure. She does do that. Yeah. Uh, 2013, you dropped your first album, Future Memories. Uh, Jada Kiss jumped on the remix to your song, The Plug. Talk about that. I know that's when you guys started kicking things off, right? Yeah, that was like when I first met Kiss. I met Kiss through Seth Free. And, um, and he liked the song. And he said, like I said, yo, I want to pay you to get on it. I had never even, I don't think I did a paid feature at that time yet, but I was like, I want to pay you to get on it. He's like, yeah, it's love. Give me whatever. He didn't even put a price on it. Like, you know, so gave him a couple dollars 
And but it wasn't even really about that. Like he was fucking with it, and and he ended up doing the record, and that record snapped. That record went crazy for me, or it felt like at the time. I'm you sure know, it did. And, and then after that, I just kept like following up with him. If he had like a appearance at a club or something, I'm following up. I'm I'm making sure like he sees my face at a lot of different events, so he don't forget about it. Because I know even me as a rapper, I might do a song with you, and I forget you a month later. Damn. Cause you gotta pop up. Yeah. You gotta, you know, people gotta see your face, but there's industry shit. You gotta be, you gotta be seen. So, yeah, kid. Um, I just kept popping up on him, like wh- whether it was like Starlets or wherever it was at. Um, and just building, building that relationship. Yeah. You know, and eventually, um, his guy, uh, his guy Ice Pick J yeah. told him like, "Yo, Millie's really the one, bro. Like, you ever heard him sing?" And Kiss is like, "No," nah. and he's like, "No, he's a whole singer, bro." And uh, and yeah, they 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 brought me on board, and that's when he really started co-signing me heavy. I actually noticed that. I think it was the G Herbo record that I listened to. I was like, "Wait, he's on the hook singing." No, like, I'm a singer, yeah, that's, that's my sick, thing. Sick though that you're able to rap and then oh, God. have this. Yeah, that's what that's what separates me too, and that's what I feel like I'm. I, I I got like a lot of respect within like the rapper community, right? But they also know like I could sing. Like that's even something Kiss has told me. Like, yo, you know how special that is that you can rap and you can sing. Yeah, like that's incredible. Why? I got whole singing records. Yeah. This smashes. Like we just we just packed out a, a show in Miami. And I'm not even thinking like I'm gonna do the singing record because it's like, you know, I don't know. I don't wanna be up here singing like boys to men and shit, but like I'm I sung that shit in the whole crowd. I was gonna say, crazy. don't they were they were yeah, they, in London they, they love it. it. The most gangster with them, the guys who really come up to me and they got I know they got smacks, multiple smacks and like killers, like I'm um, who I meet in the street. Like I know you, like yeah. like I know what type of time you're on, and they'll be like, Yo, you know what record I love? I love high beams. Uh, they like that shit for the girls and you know that 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 singing shit, so that's funny. Yeah. I just thought of this again, B Real. He said he went to a vocal coach to like help him learn how to use his voice correctly. Did you ever like how did you find your singing voice? Nah, I mean, I guess I just been singing forever. Like I've been singing since the inception, you know? I never I I never was was not singing. So Yeah. <laughs>